Close the door behind you. You're now in the green room. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Green Room. My name is Keddy Emanuel. I'm your host. You know, you're tired of me already. Um, <laughs> but I'm in here uh, with uh, B Natural, uh, Nat, uh, a phenomenal basis. He's been featured on the Caribbean Cadence platform quite a few times. Uh, this guy is a, a monster on base, and um, I'm always I'm always happy to, to see his stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good to talk to you tonight, man. It's good. It's good to have you. Yeah. Hey, man. You forget the last name. I'm Emmanuel too. Look, we, you know, we brothers, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> hey, man. You know something about Emmanuels. Something about Emmanuels yep, yep. and Beast. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, but right off the bat, I know I know anybody watching this, they're looking at your rig right behind you, right? With that uh game. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Like... That's 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 the baby man. So I've been another thing about me that people don't know about. Um I work in IT, so and I build I build all my computers, you know, and this one is this is the latest one I built, maybe like uh I would say probably three months ago. Yeah, oh, cool. Build this one. So um Cause I'm, I, I do just more than just the music, you know, I do a little video editing on the side as well. Right. Um, you know, and plus with this, I do virtual systems and stuff like that. So I manage a lot of stuff from the company also through that, you know, um, so I need the power. <laughs> I need the power. <laughs> Could you tell us a little <laughs> bit about your specs on that? Oh yeah. Um, so I got the a AMD Ryzen 9 16-4. Okay. I have um, 64 gigabytes of RAM. I have five terabytes of NVMe storage. Uh, and uh, I have the NVIDIA 3090, you know, oh, cool. all top, <laughs> all top stuff. Yeah. I mean, literally, I mean, I'm not trying to back brag, but I mean, I transfer files at like 2.2 gigabytes a second. There's no slowdown here. It's, it's just pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you put, once you add that with the gigabit speed network, I mean, it's even, like the download is ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds like a good time, man. Sounds like you're yeah, 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 a yeah. machine. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very just good. Yeah, it's funny to me hearing you say five terabytes. That's what you said, right? Yeah, yeah five terabytes, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, <laughs> I remember back in the day uh, just having like five, I think it was, I think my first machine was five, 12 megabytes. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And that used to be like the stuff back in the yeah, day. Yeah, that, right? that was... Oh man, yeah, we yeah, we, uh, yeah, we're moving. We, we have advanced. We've advanced like you know tremendously. And honestly, this is honestly it's it's even five terabytes not that much, especially when you're dealing with video. It's mm -hmm. not even that much. Like you know, there's people who have a single drive with eight terabytes on it and and up. You know, yeah. so so it just depends on what you're doing. I mean, if it's a regular user just browsing online, no need for that. But you know, once you start to do videos and um, you know, you're doing virtual systems and you're in the IT field, you got to have that space because things can eat up very quickly, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I just want to segue quickly. I know you play with mm -hmm. Sam, right? I just want to give, give uh, Samuel Tapping a shout out right now, you know? <laughs> That's uh, my boy, man. That's my boy. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam is part of the reason I play music today. I keep saying it. Wow. I'm always going to say it. it. It's real. Wow. Like, nah, he's good, man. He's good. He's doing actually some big things, man. Now, you know, he's planning different uh, venues and stuff like that. So he's, he's actually really doing his thing, you know, so I'm proud of him yeah, too, man. man. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's been, he's he put, been he put me on get some gigs. He puts me on gigs. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's good, you know? 
Yeah, man. Okay. We, we, we were in um, Form 1. Uh, and most people mm-hmm. watching this, y'all are Caribbean, so y'all know what Form 1 is. Uh, we were yeah. in Form 1. Um, but for anybody watching on the American end um, or listening on the American end, uh, Form 1 is the seventh grade. Um, yeah, something like that. And yeah, uh, yeah uh, so Sam and I are really good friends. Our good friends, and he would he would pull up to school every day and be like, "Yo, drums, drums, <laughs> <laughs> drums!" <laughs> right? and, That's funny. And like after a while, I mean, you know, you hang around with somebody long enough, you start to, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 drums. <laughs> you know, maybe I should p- pick up keys, you know, and then something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I started thinking, huh, maybe I should try and learn a little something. I do kind of like music, a little, you know, and that's yeah. where it all started, man. That's where it started. Yeah, I, I, I pretty good. Pick, yeah, picked up bass and then, yeah, here, here we are today, you know. So shout out to Sam, you know. Appreciate you, bro. Big up, big up, big up. I'm gonna tell him that too because I'm gonna see it later tonight. So, <laughs> yeah, man, tell him that for yeah. sure, man. I always appreciate that guy. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, tell the viewers and listeners uh, a little bit about you. At the top of this episode, they saw you playing bass. Um, mm-hmm. So, tell te- tell tell us a little bit about your bass journey here. Well, um, it's funny enough. Um, I'm a late boomer. So, I mean, my dad, you know, he plays the guitar. So, um, so I've always been around music. You know, my family, everybody is either sing or they play an instrument. So I've always been around music. Um, so at the time growing up, you know, my dad wanted me to play the guitar, obviously. Naturally, you know, in some of dads always want their sons to follow, you know, follow them. But uh, I wasn't interested in it, man. It's, it's funny. I, I was not interested. But um, the instrument that caught my attention was the bass, but there was no bass at the house. So um, when you used to like have the guitar, I'd be like, all right, cool. I'll cut out like the, the last uh, <laughs> uh, two strings and I'll keep the top on the phone and be like, try to like see what I can do. Mm-hmm. But it's not the same. So after a while, I was just like, ah, no. So when I migrated from, from San Lucia to, uh, to New York, um, when I went uh, to the church for the first time and I saw, you know, somebody playing the bass and it was just like, whoa, like it was, it was, it's crazy, you know? So, um, but even then I was just like, ah, you know, I'm going to focus on, you know, my studies because I was trying to be an accountant, you know, so I was, you know, studying accounting and stuff. So I wasn't, you know, trying to do anything in terms of music. So, um, so I was in the church, you know, I was just sitting there and then, you know, one of the deacons at the church showed up, he, he came to talk to me, he was like, man, you know, you, 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 you look like a musician. I was like, look like a musician? What? <laughs> like, what are you talking about that? So. He was like, man, he was, we were just having a conversation. He was like, if you were to play an instrument, what would, it, what would it be? You know, so I said, man, you know, I like the piano, you know what I'm saying? Because I really like the keys and the chords and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I really like stuff like that. Um, but I said, you know, if if there's an instrument that I really love, it would be the bass, you know what I'm saying? So, and he said, well, if you get a bass, do you think you'll play? I was like, uh, you know, if I get it, you know, I, I think I can handle myself, you know, so... And uh, two weeks after that conversation, bought me a basement right there, you know, in the church. So, um, so I got that, and then uh, I, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know where to go, like what direction. But um, my mom, she, she bought like a bunch of gospel CDs, and then I just, just, you know, started just trying to pluck, you know, the bass as much as I can, you know, try to. You remember you know, what those CDs to, were? Um, it was one. A couple of cities were from Hezekiah Walker, you know, and mm-hmm. around that time, you know, the choir's game was like pretty, pretty heavy, especially mm-hmm. in New York, you know, the, the choir game was pretty heavy. So, you know, when it comes to gospel music, you had to listen to Hezekiah Walker. That was like one of, that's what like New York, one of the main, mainstream artists. Mm-hmm. Um, still is today, still making relevant music. It's funny, it's been years. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it, it was, you know, Fred Hammond, you know, like all those, you know, the guys, uh, Marvin Sapp, you know, so a lot of those older records and, you know, Clock Sisters and all that stuff. So she would get those CDs and I would listen to the bass and try to mimic everything. But, you know, I was still missing something because my fingering wasn't good and whatnot. So um, I know one of my friends, you know, he was playing and he said, hey, man, you know, check out Victor Wood. And he had a, like an instructional DVD and he said, check out Victor Wood. And so I was like, I don't know who that is. But, you know, I was just like, all right, check it out. And then so he was giving some instructional videos. So I was trying to follow it, you know, to the T. 
Um, and then I kind of, that's what helped build my, you know, my technique in terms of like, you know, how to, um, how to slap on the base and stuff like that. So I learned a lot from that DVD. Um, and I would urge anybody, you know, anybody that's learning bass to watch that DVD, even though it's, it came out like probably 96, that DVD came out <laughs> in like 96, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, in, in like 2000 and I guess like in 2004, that's when somebody gave me that CD and that's it. And I'm telling anybody, do you watch that? Do you watch that? It will change your life. I mean, that's how I knew what harmonics was, you know, even though like, you know, we can now say Jaco pioneered that, but I didn't know who Jaco was. And I, from watching that DVD pointed me to Jaco and all the mm -hmm. rest of the other, you know, bass players. So, yeah. so because he, he went into depth of like, you know, the history and, and I tell any musician, know the history because, you know, you can just play and everyone, all, all of us want to play. Right. But always know the history, you know, from yeah. where it comes from, the styles, where it come from, you know, the eras, even the years. Like learn when you learn that you you starting to have appreciation for the bass and what the instrument is. Because a lot of times, you know, when people say, "Oh yeah, the bass is the foundation," but you everybody just say that, but understand why that foundation was there. You know, understand why who developed that slapping technique. You got to know who Larry Graham is. You got to learn like all those older guys. Once you know that, you start to realize, oh my role as a bass player again a lot of us play but we, we understand the role that we have because the role that we have is very important because people just think well oh because you know so you will have conversation with people all you all you're just playing notes no you, you're not just playing notes first of all you keep in the rhythm you're following the keyboard player number one and you're also listening to what's going around you because you have a, a foundation that you like you could take out the bass and you have a drum and then the keyboard Something is missing. But once you the bass plays there, you're like, oh, snap. It, like, it could take that music and change it and bring it out to a whole different place. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So um, so there's a role there, you know. Um, so once you understand that role, you start to, like, approach bass a little differently, just not just by playing, but now you're like, okay, I have a responsibility in the band to make sure everything is running. You know, people will see the drummer, obviously, because the drummer keeps the beat or whatever. All that stuff is cool. Yeah. But when the bass player comes in, it's, I'm not trying to be biased <laughs> because I'm a bass player. Because I love drums too. And I think drums actually to me is the most important instrument in a band per se. But mm -hmm. when the bass comes in, that's a whole different thing. You can take it to somewhere else where nobody would thought that it would, it would go to. So so that's my um thing about that. So just coming back to all of that, you know, I always try to find, I was actually looking for somebody to actually teach me, but I couldn't, the people that I wanted to teach, they were all touring and doing all that stuff. So I said, you know what, all right. I can't wait for that and say, well, the reason why I'm not progressing is because I don't have a teacher. But I was like, no. So um, I decided to, you know, try to, uh, and that's another thing about that DVD. It said, try to get your identity. And that's one thing that I always like stressed. It's getting my identity. So if I'm, if I'm doing something, I would learn the track to the T. I would learn that. And then I say to myself, well, if I was in the studio, how would I approach that track? Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So, so I would still keep the elements of the track, but then add my flavor. But a lot of times, if you listen to my videos, a lot of times what I'm playing is actually in the track. You just have to listen for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because there's yeah, a lot yeah. of times things, things like you listen to the track and you're like, everybody's like, woo, people who, me, I would stay in a verse and dissect each instrument and understand what each instrument is doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, I never heard that before because because there's so many layers. Yeah. And I listened to the guitar player and he did a line, but it wasn't, you know, it, the exact note that the keyboard is playing. But I'm like, why did he play that note? So I would try to translate that on the bass now and say, well, how can I incorporate that line but still keep the foundation? And mm -hmm. that's where I get my identity from. That's how I start to formulate and how I arrange certain things because I hear it in the track and I'm like, all right, I can just do it there, you know, so. And um, so that, that's pretty much, you know, my journey. You know, someone looked at me and said, hey, I didn't even know that. But, you know, they gave me the opportunity, bought me a base because honestly, I didn't have the money to buy it. Right? <laughs> so um, did that. And then uh, and that's where that's where I'm at today. You know, I'm a, I was only playing at church. And then, you know, some people would just come in and they'd be like, who do you play for? I'm like, no, I don't play for anybody. But they're like, do you want to play for us? And then that's how I started. You know, that's how people started getting to know and um and the journey's been great and i'm still i'm still doing it till this day honestly i've been playing bass now for i would say maybe 18 years 
no, oh, wow. like probably 18. Like the bass I have, and the bass you see in the videos, that's actually it's a 15 year old bass. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> 15 years old. And and I'll tell you the story about that one. Like that bass, I saw somebody, one of you know, one of my mentors, I saw him playing that bass. And I just fell in love with that bass. I've heard all of the basses. I heard that one. I was like, no, that's the bass I want to play. And lo and behold, um, I was working, but I, I only had like, because this bass, I mean, it was like $4,000. I, I, I was back in 05, okay? Yeah. And I only had, I had literally exactly $4,000 in my account. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> every so, cent. <laughs> every cent, right? So I, and I, I walked into the store and I saw the base. I was like, oh, all right. And I look at the price. I was like, ah. And then I, somebody picked up the bass and he started playing. I was like, okay, you know, he played and it was sounding good. So I said, you know what, let me try the bass out. I started playing. I was like, man, I only got $4,000 in my account. And I was like, you know what? So this is what I said. I said, God, if this bass is for me, I put it on the rack. If it's there tomorrow, ah, I'll, maybe I'll do it, right? So <laughs> next day, bass was still on the rack. I was like, ah, still $4,000. Oh, I don't know. Because my savings, if I spend that money, I can't, I can't take the train to go back home. Yeah, <laughs> you're just, you're just, so, <laughs> it's just so you I and said, the base. Lord, you, I said, Lord, if you make a way, if the base is still there tomorrow, I'm going to get it. So, all right. Next day, base still there. But I'm still contemplating. I'm like, nah, this is just a fool. This, nah, so that's not for me. So I said, you know what? All right. So I said, and I saw somebody, he picked up the base and he was like, you know what? I feel like I'm going to buy the base. So I was like, oh man. So that means... I won't be able to get it. So I said, Lord, yeah. if that base is there tomorrow. Because like, three is my number. So third so this day, is three days now. That base is there. Three days now, man. I said, if it's, the base is still there, I'm going to get it. Came back the third day, man. The base was still there. I said, all right, put it on layaway. <laughs> I went, <laughs> got all the money, purchased it, man. And at first, I was like, man, I ain't got no money. But guess what? You know, 15 years later, this it's made that quad whatever you want to multiply by ten thousand. <laughs> so and that's that's where it's at man you know so yeah man no yeah. i mean i mean and, and that's that's a good story there and one thing that really stands out to me is how like the journey really started from somebody who who recognized the potential somebody from yeah. outside who was like yo let's put you on base you know and, right. <laughs> You know, and I, I think it's so powerful, especially for us older musicians to uh, feed into the young people, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I remember um, up till very recently, I lived in Boston. And mm -hmm. while, while there, after church, there was always this younger guy. I, I don't know if he's watching this, but shout out to you, bro. <laughs> but he would come up and he'd be like, yo, can, can I play a little bit? And he would get on my yeah. face and he would do a little something. And yeah. then he, he would ask me questions and stuff like that. And I always tried to make time to just sit and talk to him and stuff. Then he got his own bass. And then, yeah. you know, you know, because I, I could see the potential. I saw his mm -hmm. air. I, I could see, oh, oh, you, you got something. You just keep trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and now, you know, he's playing for services. He's, he's doing his thing, you know. Um, and that's so, what we have to do, man. That's how, that's honestly, that's the responsibility that we, that, that we have as musicians that we have to bring next generation forward. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, because like I said, you know, I'm not going to be playing like this forever, but the, for me is what makes me happy is that along the journey, I was able to help a lot of people make choices and put them in the right path. And, you know, and that makes me better because once everybody is elevated, everybody's going together, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a better thing, you know? So, um, so you're, so you're totally right about that, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, so real quick, viewers and listeners, if you're watching this, if you're with us right now, uh, he mentioned Victor Wooten, right? And a, a couple of episodes back, I was talking with Fia Cook. Fia is from the British Virgin Islands. Shout out to yeah. you, Fia. Um, and uh, she was telling me about a seminar, workshop kind of thing that she had mm -hmm. with Victor Wooten. And for those of you who are watching this and you don't know who Victor Wooten is. Got to check him out. Check him Got to check him out.
Got to check him out. Man. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to put it <laughs> right there. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, we're back. It. Yeah, so you saw that, right? That was Victor Wooten. Um, yeah, he's definitely, like, and I'm telling you, I wish I could find the DVD and maybe, like, send a link or something, but, but it's, like, it's, like, brown, and he's, like, is him on the base, and, you know, but if they can check that DVD out, I would say for somebody starting out, if you really want to, like, dive deep dive, and with the knowledge and, you know, the history, watch yeah. that DVD. It's, like, it's amazing. I mean, most likely things have been updated then, but when it comes down to somewhat of a foundation and techniques and stuff like that, just, and just to get your fingers, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Like that DVD, just like, it changed my life because I was trying to teach myself and trust me, I was not going, away. I was playing <laughs> the notes and everything, but I, I felt something was missing, you know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. like, he really like broke it down and I was just like, oh, this is, this is pretty good. Yeah. You sometimes know? all it really takes is that direction, you know, to just, just yeah. have, have like a path that you're following and, and really, uh, uh, being able to use that to channel your your own growth, you know. Yeah. So yeah, definitely shout out to that guys. If you you can hear my dog, you know, what can you do, right? I, did. <laughs> I can't do nothing about it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's out there. Um, but yeah, man. So coming back to you, you mentioned that mm -hmm. you, your father played guitar, um, mm -hmm. and you basically from a musical family. Um, mm -hmm. How do you how do you think that's influenced your journey? Because I keep asking people this uh, because mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by musical families. Um, mm -hmm. my, my, my mom uh, sings, used to sing. My sister sings, used to sing. Uh, my dad doesn't really do much musically. Um, mm -hmm. but it, it kind of fascinates me because I'm trying to figure out the whole musical family thing. Um, actually, it, it influenced me a lot, especially when it comes to practicing. Like my dad, three o'clock in the morning practicing Dang. right like three o'clock in the morning. like and i heard him practicing one lick for about two hours and i used to be like i used to be like what is he doing you know what I'm saying? like he's playing the same thing over but and i one time i asked him that and i said i've heard you play the same lick. i mean i know you i mean i saw the progression of certain things and he would do variations but i was like i asked him because like why it's been two hours you're playing the same thing he's like no he's he's like he's looking for a certain sound and when he doesn't get that he's going to continue get making sure that it happens but then i was like but it's not a perfect like an hour ago <laughs> <Right? laughs> but it's like it's like no it's not about just having that one lick but taking that one lick and being able to play it in every key every variation in any possible so when he's applying it in the song there is no limitation. You can apply yeah. it at any point in time. Yeah. And that alone stuck with me. That alone stuck with me. I didn't have to hear anything else, but that alone stuck with me, even with my practicing. Like, I would stay, like I said, in a verse of a song for the same three hours, just trying to learn how to play that verse in different variations and in, in, in grooves, playing notes, switching it up and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, they know that people know, I mean, there are so many ways you can play any five chord. You know what I'm saying? So it just depends on how you voice it. I have a note already as where I want to approach that very same chord. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So there's no, some sort of a limitation. Because, you know, sometimes people practice and they gloss over the music and ah, I just want to fast track the song yeah, in yeah, like, yeah. you know, 20 minutes. Some people can learn the song in five minutes and that's cool. But for me, when I approach songs, it's like, I, you can put me in any band, in any situation, and I can approach a song differently, but the thing is, I I will be a chameleon with this band. So even though you can put me in there, I'm not gonna sound the same. I'm gonna sound if we're playing it in Latin, I'm gonna play in Latin. If we're playing it in <laughs> reggae, I'm gonna play in reggae. Yeah. But you know, you have to be able to play different ways. You cannot just stick with one thing because at the end of the day, then you become, you know, you become limited. So for me, I never want to be limited in any situation that I'm in. So I'm just like, you know what? You know, if I can practice the verse and I know the song, like I know the characteristics of the song, like I could just play that song. Because I hate feeling like when I'm on a gig and I'm playing and I have to be stuck either by the by the book or I got to be stuck with what, you know, what was given to me. I have somebody, I'm just like, no, I got to be free. So knowing that, knowing how the verse is, even when I know the singer is going to go to that note, I'm like, okay, you're going to go to that note, but this is where I'm going to be. So it's I'm not going to be stuck somewhere. Like, it's yeah. all, that's how... I like to play freely, you know what I'm saying? But in terms, but to play freely, 
you have to know the material. It's like, you have to, you know what I'm saying? And for me, another thing that, you know, another thing I got from my dad was, even when he didn't know the music, he played it like he knew it. And I was like, <laughs> I gotta get that. Like, that's something like, you know, uh, because I, truth be told, like there was one time I was um, heading um, to Manhattan and um, I was driving and I had my bass and somebody was like, no, the, my bass player, he can't make it. He's sick. Yo, can you come and do this gig in the next two hours? I'm like, yeah, but what's the music? <laughs> so, and he'll send me the music. And, you know, I only have like, you know, an hour to just listen to it because I'm on the way to the gig. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So right. um, just picking out the elements. And like I said, once you know, like, you know, chord structures, difference between major and minor, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of variations of chords. Once you have yeah. that knowledge in your mind, when you start to approach the music now, I'm not approaching it like, ah, oh, where are we going to go? I'm more like, all right, I already have the foundation. I'm just going to play what I memorized, but then understand the feel. And by the, by the second verse, I'm good because mm -hmm. I already had that experience. So, so it's just different techniques. And heroin, I, I don't, listen, you could play the instrument and that's like 50%. But heroin, your, your ears is like, to me, if I have to redo the scale, I'll say playing the instrument is like 40%. 60% is hearing. <laughs> I, I'm that serious. Because yeah. I, I mean, I've seen people who who can who have the fundamentals and everything down. But when it comes to hearing and playing, you can't mm -hmm. hear it. If you can't hear it, you cannot play. And that's where my mindset is, you know. So hearing is very important. That's another thing that I've trained myself to like know, like, okay, I don't know if you ever done this before, but I would just play one chord and put it on sustain, and I would just play different notes. And one chord and change everything. Do it, man. And the, right. Yeah. And not really, just stay, just stay on the C chord. Bam. Mm -hmm. And keys. And lettering and change it with the bass. Because the bass it has the ability to change anything. Trust me, right. if you if a bass player plays a wrong note, everybody has that <laughs> Oh, oh it, yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't even matter. You play oh like, man. Oh, everybody has that. But I'm using that same concept though. You play one chord, and I'm just yeah. gonna be playing around and be like, "Oh, picking the notes, see, like mm -hmm. how can I make? Even if it's in the major, I can just change it. I can make it something else. You know what I'm saying? So with that knowledge, I use that and I approach my music the same way. So and that's if you're gonna understand, that's where my style is. That's where I get everything from. So, but it, again, it comes by listening and hearing and understanding, breaking down different parts. So don't always, and I challenge everybody, don't always just listen to. The bass player, because you know the bass player's done licks and everything like that. But mm -hmm. understand that a lot of times, even in those runs and the groove, the drummer actually did the pattern. He just put it in note form. Hey. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, oh man, this is this is dope. And for me, playing the band, I love when the band is together. I mean, it's good to everybody have the individual time and they, you know you get to do your thing. But it's always good when the music comes together and everybody's like in sync. Man, it's. Yeah. To me, that's where it is for me. <laughs> yeah, that's where yeah, it is. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, you mentioned a very important principle that I, I really want us to kind of dive into. You mentioned that uh, you like to be a chameleon, right? When you're in a yeah. band, uh, basically mesh, meshing and melting into uh, the, the musical part that that band is. Uh, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that and, and how? Um, damn, I lost, your, I lost your voice again. Oh, wait, I take it back. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you, you're back, you're back, yeah, you're back. All right, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, well, one, first thing, as a musician, your ego is checked at the door. That's number one. Because sometimes, you like, you know, some people will, like, you know, they're playing a band, and like, oh, I'm too, I'll eat, I'm too good, or they don't want to get direction, even though they have a certain caliber level. You know what I'm saying? And... I think as a musician, you have to let that check out the door because everybody is at different levels. Everybody know, I don't know anybody who's going to be on the same level. There's, mm -hmm. there's the people going to be up here and sometimes you're going to be here. So it's a matter of like, all right, you have to keep your agenda outside. That's number one. And then yeah. number two, you start to understand like, all right, where, what type of music we're doing? Like, you know, different. Cause some, some, sometimes like I play, like I'll just give an example, like can't hide love by, um so well, well, that's gonna mess up though so i don't want to mess that up but i show everybody know what kind of love is um and i played that song in so many different bands and it's never been the same mm. right so 
how do you feel like if I do a hit, a certain hit with a band, I don't expect them to know that hit that I did with the band. Yeah, right. So I'm not going to try and play that. I would first approach the music the way everyone would learn it. So now if they do something and they make an arrangement, then I can able to like, all right, yeah, then I can play. But in. don't, yeah. if, you did, if you did something with a band and you come in and do it with another band and, and you're looking at them like, what are you guys doing? And I'm like, no, they're play, actually playing the track, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you, so that's what I'm saying. First, when you go to any band or any situation, you approach the music as everybody's listening to that CD, right? So you're right. playing that. Now, if you want to add different notes and everything, once you get comfortable with who's playing, and because musicians have a way of learning and fit, knowing how someone plays in like maybe 10 seconds. Like, oh, yeah. so, like you know, like when you play <laughs> somebody or you go to a sound check, you hear somebody do something, you're like, okay, this person got some stuff. You're like, all right. Or, or you'll be like, you'll have somebody do like a sound check and you're like, okay, I understand his feel. I understand where he's going. So now I can adjust now and be like, all right, this is how he plays it. Now I can adjust, you know, to what the drummer is doing. Because a lot of times yeah. people don't understand drum and bass is like hand in hand. And yep. one of the first things I listen to for me from a drummer is the kick. That's like number one, like the kick pattern, where it is or whatever. So okay. even if he might play the kick pattern wrong and I'm saying, hey, this is how you do it. If he doesn't hear that, uh, first I will play his pattern so that we're actually moving together, even though it might not be right. But the fact that we're going together, it doesn't sound too wrong because mm-hmm. we are together playing. Mm-hmm. So, but in any point in time, I will probably communicate and be like, throw the kick hair instead. And if he listens and he catches it, then we kind of move together rather than me being like, no, it's here. No, it's here. <laughs> and then we're fighting on the gig. Like, that's yeah. not going to work. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I would say anybody you play in the band, that's how you would like approach it. You know what I'm saying? And then once you, and then once you see that and you have like a, a, a connection, then we can bounce off ideas. And that's how people, you know, would, that actually, if you notice, there are certain certain missions that are always doing all the gigs. Why is that? <laughs> because they're able to just again check that you go at the door. So everybody can just play together and learn how to understand each other, create the conversation, and make music. That's yeah. what it is about. But yeah. if you don't, if you're someone that's just stuck up and I'm doing this and this is me and that's it, you're not gonna get that far. <laughs> no, no, I, I get that for sure, man. So just just for the sake of the viewers and listeners. I want mm-hmm. to make sure that we kind of itemize this, right? So from the top, mm-hmm. we're saying the first thing you're doing, if you're walking into a, a, a new band space, you're learning the music, right? You make yeah. sure you actually mm-hmm. learn the music because you if, learn you the music, yeah. Yeah, if you don't learn the music, how are you going to be on the same page with everybody else? Nah, right? Okay, never. Yeah. And, then, and then now that you walk in and, you know, let's imagine that this is your first time playing with everybody. Uh, you hear what mm-hmm. the guy's doing on keys. You hear, okay, you, you hear some lines that the guitarist is playing. Um, you you yep. can hear, hear the drummer. Oh, the drummer really likes uh, uh, his, his rim shots or I, I don't know, mm-hmm. snare, whatever. Snare, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> then you can kind of say, okay, I, I, I know what he's doing in terms of, you know, he, he, he likes to do a fill right here in the chorus, you know, right. stuff like mm-hmm. that. And all of a sudden, now you, you have a very informed position to really enhance right. the sound uh, of yeah. your band with your instrument, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect. man. Perfect. You, you put it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we just gave you a formula right there, you know. Um, uh, I, I definitely think that that goes a long way in terms of enhancing uh, the musical product that you're making with with people, especially people that you just met. If you, you're going yeah, into a yeah. brand new musical situation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, one thing you want, you want people to say, you know what, I mean, I enjoy playing with this guy. Because you, you just never know who you meet, especially on gigs and rehearsals and stuff like that. That's why also being a musician, a lot has to do with attitude and how you present yourself. Because always people always yeah. think it's the music. Yes, yeah. I mean, part of it is your skill, whatever, but how punctual you are. Are you on time? Because you know, some musicians just, you know, <laughs> say, hey, you gotta be at rehearsal at uh, seven and you show up at nine, you know? Right. <laughs> and still saying, hey, I'll be in traffic. Like, no, man, you have to be, you know, be on time. I mean, life happens. You know what I'm saying? We all understand that. But when right. it constantly happens, uh, something is wrong, <laughs> right? Well, not so, even just that. Uh, I, I just <laughs> want to hop in. Oftentimes, mm-hmm. guys think, oh, on time means, okay, you, you told me that we're doing sound check at eight, right? Mm-hmm. And I show up at eight with my gig bag <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just there to set up. Nah, at eight, 
you that you is. be there and you be set up. You be ready you to be go up, at eight. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that that means you're actually showing up at seven thirty. You're actually showing up at seven right. if you have to, so that right. you have enough time to Especially set up for people who take yeah. who take long to set up. You know, like you know, you, you have to be there at least a little early. For me, I actually that's funny. We talk we're talking about this right now. Um, for me, I time myself. I give myself at least five to ten minutes to get set up. There you you go. know what I'm saying? Like at any gig when I come to, it's like when you guys ready to go, ready to sound check or whatever. Um, because for me, my bass settings don't really change, but I, because I have a, a library of amps that I play on, mm-hmm. you know, especially when I do other gigs, I request certain amps because I'm like, I already know what I'm, I'm you gonna, like. you know, my settings are, so I don't have to sit around fiddling on anything. So, um, so once that is already set up, honestly, just tune my bass five minutes, make sure I get sound airs, and then I'm good, you know. So, not not too much maintenance because you know sometimes with the sound guy you know you give him a lot of problems it's gonna make you sound terrible <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's always good to you know when you come in and you have your personality you got to make sure everything is checked at the door because you want to yeah. make sure you never know you're gonna meet because at the end of the day i'll be honest with you um a lot of the gigs i've gotten been yo i love playing this guy they'll if you need a bass player your name is recommended and that's how mm-hmm. things go you know mm-hmm. you have a bad experience and you know you're very stuck up i'm telling you you just lost like five gigs right there. And that's what people, I, I, I always just that to people, always, you know, be punctual, you know, be, you know, just be attentive. We're not to take constructive criticism. Sometimes people said things to me that I did not even like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, I, I like so at some point, I, I wanted to tell them off, but <laughs> some people would be like, nah, hold on, take some time, listen to it, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then even from that, get another two gigs. <laughs> you know, it, it's how it works. So sometimes I understand, even though you might be right in how you would want to like, you know, talk to somebody, but and sometimes you have to look at the bigger picture and be like, you know what, maybe what they're saying makes some sense. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to look at it and for green of salt, you know. Yeah, so man. I'm not saying I'm not telling anybody to take any disrespect from anybody. That's not what I'm saying. But then sometimes you have to learn how to manage what is disrespect and what is your feeling. Because sometimes you somebody can tell you something that triggers a feeling. But it's right. not a disrespect, so right. you have to kind of separate the two. You know right. what I'm saying? So no, that's what I said. For sure, man. I, I get that, uh, and it, it's really emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence get goes a long yeah. way. Uh, you might feel hurt, you might feel mad, mm-hmm. uh, but you can you can stop and you know count to ten and say, okay, yeah. uh, <laughs> we, we can let that one go. It's, yeah. it's all good. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Yeah, man. Did did you see this video? Um, we're church musicians, so so this conversation is going to be really churchy. But did you see this video with um, uh, Bishop Paul Morton? It was going making the rounds on social media. Uh, basically, he he was preaching, and mm-hmm. he's getting right around to to the appeal moment, and then you see like two little guys just running across the stage in the back, <laughs> trying to get to <laughs> they try to get to the instruments, right? Oh. Um, yeah, man. I guess you didn't see it, but on, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't see it. Yeah, on the internet, musicians were saying like, "Yo, we need to stop this," because he turned around and he was rebuking them. He was like, "Yo, y'all, mm. y'all, are, y'all can't be doing this in the middle of the service, running across the stage, <laughs> trying." <laughs> but but that's the thing, right? You you play for different churches, and then you know mm. after the pray set, uh, oftentimes guys kind of just leave their posts, and you might kind of yeah. sneak, sneak into a green room at the back, you know, or something like that um so what do you think about because people were saying like yeah the bishop shouldn't have talked to them like that you you can't t- just call people out uh, other people were saying like nah you know they should have been at their post they they know mm-hmm. you know uh, they shouldn't have been running across the stage like that so what do you <laughs> think about that um for me well me personally i stay on stage um i stay at my post at all times because at the end of the day um for me uh i don't just play you know, I'm I'm a worshiper. You know what I'm saying? I'm in I'm in church. So, mm. as as a musician, and I've always thought about this. Um, like our job is is bigger than just playing. You know, we're actually also our minstrels that usher the presence. You know, sometimes people don't talk about that, but a lot of times, we as musicians, we have a responsibility to usher the presence of God through our playing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, um. And what do I mean by that is one, we got to be prayed of, you know, two, um, even when 
you know, you're playing a song and someone is singing words, you know what I'm saying? Like just a great example, if someone is saying, you know, I, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. You got to play like you're always going to be lifting up your eyes to the hills from right. where it's coming from my health. You, you know, right. you're not just playing that. Your, act, your life has to reflect that in your instrument. And that's how right. I always try to do, especially when I'm on the bass, when I'm playing. So even when, you know, we're done the preset, sometimes people are still in worship. You have to be cognizant about even keeping that feel throughout, even when the preacher comes and, you know, preach. So you cannot just be like, all right, I'm done playing, I cut off. And I don't, like I said, I'm, I'm not casting anything on anybody, but that's like an individual thing. And spiritually, it's where you, you got to have that connection, you know? So if you have that connection, we're not just going to just walk out. And me, most of the time, if you see in my videos, I'll, or I mean, I don't really post just videos up like that, but but the, but the few that I have on, I'm always on stage. I'm always there ready because sometimes the bishop might be like, you know what? I just want to praise now. So if we left, the praise of worship and then the bishop is like well i need the musicians now and then it comes up but you're on video it just looks bad you know it, it just looks bad all all around you know what i'm saying so uh, i won't say well i didn't hear what kind of language he did or whatever so oh, he wasn't even say, well, it wasn't even right. that bad it wasn't that bad i promise but you. but at the same time as we had need to understand the role of musician and we need to I'm, I'm not saying i have not done it you know i there were times mm -hmm. where i walked out you know when i was in a crusade and you know, sometimes on stage, you know, like they'll want the pastor. So I would walk out mm. and go drink some water, whatever. But yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, do that, use the bathroom, but come right back to the post rather than, okay, the pastor, he's, 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 hey, he's about to do the altar call right now. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not, I'm not so, going to lie, man. Uh, that's hey, definitely you know been me a couple of times. I'm not going <laughs> to but, but also, but here's the other thing yeah. about that. And I'll show you something. Here's the other yeah. thing about that. When you come back now and he's about to do the altar call, what song you're gonna do? You see, yeah. when it comes down to the preaching and you understand the word and he did the word, then when he when he's coming for altar call now, you you should have already known the word was in your heart. You should already now have a song ready mm. for altar call. So like, if you just come in and you come in because no spiritual connection now, and then you come and you want to play a song, you're just gonna play a song and, be, and then sometimes the preacher will be like, nah, I don't want that song. I want something else. Yeah. Yeah. See. So that's why it's important for us. And now, like I said, we've been up stage all the time. You want to take a bathroom break, take a bathroom, water break or whatever, but go in, come back out. So it's like a seamless transition rather than <laughs> it looks bad. And it, it is bad. I, I, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't fall in for that. It, it is bad. You know? so, but it, it's kind of awkward too. Cause like th there's been times where, so there was this, this church that I played at where mm -hmm. the, the place that the room that we'd go to was at the yeah. back. Like it was literally at the back mm -hmm. of the church. And so like when you kind of hear like, oh, the energy shifting into like a, a altar call sort of thing, mm -hmm. you, you now have to walk through the entire church. Bro. Mm -hmm. Now it wasn't, it wasn't huge. It, it wasn't like a yeah. huge sanctuary, but still like you're walking through still. the entire sanctuary to Everybody get to your post. You. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, and, so. You know what's funny? And, and here's the thing. And, 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 I, and I'm going to show you why that, that that's a trickle-down effect. Because we musicians, are, you already know when it comes down to, you know, getting a stipend from church or whatever, you already know that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So now you create another problem. They're like, oh, all the musicians come in here, they play, they're not really a part of the service. There's going to be people that's going to be complaining, why should we give them any stipend when they're not even in church or they just come mm -hmm. in and just play? You see, you give yourself all those excuses. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's right either because, you know, we, we, we need to get paid for what we do. Mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, you're adding all those extra stuff so that people could, like, fuel to the fire, per se. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you see, they're not even a part of this. So why are we actually doing this for them? You know what I'm saying? So, so that's why we're already looked upon with a magnifying glass. <laughs> so we have to actually set the example. And I think once we do that, um then everything else you know falls into place you know what yeah. i'm saying so so that's what that's my take on it i try to give nobody no nothing say like oh this is bass player man you know he plays good but you know he's not part of the you know i'm not trying to give anybody <laughs> anything <laughs> yeah man and you know? so that actually reminds me of a question here mm -hmm. um I, I recently moved to st lucia so i'm in st lucia right now okay. and um uh the culture in St. Lucia and, and everybody watching mm -hmm. this across the Caribbean, you're probably not getting paid to play at your church, right? Okay. Um, 
I understand it. I understand yeah, it. yeah, <laughs> of course. So mm -hmm. it's like, how how do we now communicate to people that uh, it's a you should probably be paying your musicians? And here's why. How would you answer the here's why if they're if they're asking you why? So there's a there's a lot of double standards to this. So um, listen, and I'll be honest with you. And it, it, and it comes down to a church thing. You see, when Beyonce and all those artists, when they want to have a show, they pay, okay? They want to have a show to get the point across. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you, they get paid for rehearsals, because you're dedicating the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I find it fascinating that, you know, with church, they're like, oh, you only playing like three, three four songs. Why you? we need to pay you with this? No, 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 no. I tell people all the time, you're not paying me for three, four songs. Right. You're paying for the experience that I can come in here and knock out three, four songs. Because you cannot pick up a Joe from the street to right. play four songs and be your service going to be successful. That's not going to happen. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then when you say, well, we need you there every Saturday or every Sunday. So, okay, that's fine. But... So when when you got when uh when we go to the hospital we tell the nurse oh uh we need you know something for oh you, well you, it's just like a minor headache you, you, know, you <laughs> just give me a pill and it's it's not right. gonna cost me five hundred dollars right? Right, right you're not gonna tell him that right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so and people don't understand people because the problem with 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 Caribbean folks you, you think like a musician being a musician is not a job and one thing I want to tell people is this: that's not true. A musician, being a musician, is a profession. People go to school for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, the music that we see and we hear, people go to school for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I'm not saying it's just the schooling, but at the same time, even with advertisements, how is it, how do you think you get this music from? Who's doing it? Yeah. Producers. Who well, musicians are playing that? That's a, that's a full time job. And yeah. I'm sorry, there's there are musicians. That are making more money than accountants, doctors, and whatnot in music. So mm -hmm. don't say that it's not a job. You might not see where the money is coming from. Cause some people don't see, because they're like, oh, they have to see, because you know, for people it's seen is believing. You know, you understand right. what I'm saying? Right. But no, it's like it's just like a regular profession. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> here's the thing: you could have a musician, and then stuff, an artist come, they say, Hey, you wanna you wanna play? You lost the musician, then you're gonna cry and be like, oh. He, he went to play for the artist and he just left us hanging dry. Um, that's his profession. But you said it's not a job mm. because it's to so suit you. And so uh, here's the thing. Like the Bible talks about this. Like, you know, your gift is going to make room for you. He didn't say some gifts. <laughs> some gifts? <laughs> no. And, I, and this, I'll be honest with you. I, I've, I've been, uh, I did music full time for four years. Right. And I remember um, when the market crashed because um, I'm a computer engineer. And when the market crashed, I lost my job. Okay, I couldn't get a job because there was no jobs around. You're talking about 2008? There. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, there was no jobs. I couldn't get a job, right? right? And the music helped me. And, and when I mean it helped me, it was to the point where the money that I was making in the week, I made it in one day. And I could chill for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week, <laughs> right. and be cool. Right. And everybody put the clocking in seven hours a day. I have to do that. And right. I did it for four years, and I did not want to go back to the force. And the only <laughs> reason why I went back to the to the workforce, honestly, is because I set some goals that I wanted to do, and then it mm -hmm. just made more sense because I have, you know, I have a, a skill and a talent. And I'm just having it hair wasting, and I could be making more money. But that's, right. <laughs> so, but other than that, if I had to choose, you know what I'm saying? Um, I would have been doing music all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And it, people can say, people, I mean, the pandemic happened and then you lost a lot of gigs, you know, we lost a lot of stuff or whatever. But here's the thing, you know, people will say, well, what was, what was going to happen? But here's the thing. That's another conversation for another day. But if you're not someone that budgets, who saves money, who, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, if you don't do that, then obviously in any job, you could be a nurse if you're not saving no money. And then the pandemic shut down and then you couldn't work. Everybody losing. So right. it's not about like, okay, well, where the money's come from. It's about, you know, you have to be responsible. And I, I urge musicians to please be responsible because at the end of the day, you can have the gigs today and you could be, and then the next week you could be done tomorrow, <laughs> right? right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, you always got to plan for the next, for the next season, you know what I'm saying? So, but at the end of the day, coming back to the conversation that we have and like, you know, churches think like, well, you know, musicians are not a job. You have to change that mentality because every profession is a job. 
regardless of what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you notice some churches who are ahead of the curve with a ban and they're they're paying, not just paying, but taking care of them. And I'm not, I don't want mm -hmm. to use the word pain because you're not really paying somebody because you can't really pay me because people think like, well, we give you $120, $150 and we are paying you. No, you're not paying because mm -hmm. you cannot, because the, because the experience is way beyond what you're paying. Right, but, right. Yeah, but it's almost like trying to put out a product. If you want to put out something and, you know, and I don't know why people feel like, you know, when it's church, we're just going to do something anyhow. But then, but then we're saying like we, we want to we want to do things you know according to um, God's word, but we're not perfecting our situation. It's like people come to church and then we have singers and then they don't practice and they just come on the, on the mic and sing, and they say we're singing from the heart. No, you're not. Right. You're not singing from the heart <laughs> because if you were singing from the heart, you would have practiced. Yeah, you got, got be, it right. Wanted to make it make it perfect because yeah. you're serving a God that is perfect. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be perfect, but if you're giving if you're giving Him your best. He will take your best and make it the rest. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so yes. at the end of the day, if you're not doing that, don't come to me and tell me that, oh, well, I'm giving, we're giving you. No, you're not doing that. Because at the end of the day, you don't even practice at all. And then we yes. just come and sing. And then when we see what we're playing online, then people are wondering, oh my God, you sound terrible. But no, but did they practice? <laughs> no. But yes. that's what we do as musicians. Like, I mean, conversation shouldn't even be a discussion. But then they'll say, oh, we're losing our musicians to the world. Why? Now, yeah, how, how are you gonna tell somebody I can't I can't feed my family? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's you know, it's 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 a double standard. But you know yeah. what? Nobody's saying the pastor don't need to get paid. There you go. <laughs> right, right there. There that's where it is. The pastor's supposed to do it for God. That's your that's your argument. He's supposed to do it for God. So how is he feeding his family? So you cannot tell the musician, you can't say that. Yeah. Come on, that, that doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, man. So, I, I, really, I really think where it starts is um, appreciation, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It has to come from a place where people begin to appreciate um, musicians in the Caribbean a, a lot more, especially church musicians, uh, yeah. especially in terms of, like, if you're paying me to play, you're not, uh, as you said, you're not just paying me for four songs. You're not, you're not paying me for three songs. No. It took me hundreds of hours of practice, hundreds of hours of practice like to learn. You. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to, you know, my air has been trained for years to say, oh, I just hear a sound and I know, oh, the four, five, right. seven, flat five, flat two, you know? Right. And that takes time. That takes years of, of deliberation and practice and, and really honing your craft. And so I, I really want to shout out to the people who might be watching this. If, if you if you want to, if you're watching this, you want to cut this clip out and share it with your pastor. <laughs> uh, you know, we just need to appreciate musicians a, a little bit more in the Caribbean. I think it's okay to pay our musicians. And I, I think we'd see a lot more growth if we did that um, in the region. Yeah. Um, so Boss, do you have anything else before we head out? Um, I don't know. Like I said, just you know, just encourage the young musicians, and that's coming up, and even the older ones too as well. Um, just keep fighting, just keep pushing. I mean, me for me, I'm still fighting, I'm still pushing. Um, you know, no, I, I, I would, I, I don't even think I'm great. I just feel like, look, I'm still trying to even learn. Um, I still there's so, still sounds in my head. I'm trying to experiment with. You know, I just want to evolve. And you know, I what I used to be afraid of when I was young, I was like, man, when I when I hit like you know thirty, I might be too old. I might not be able to play. Like honestly, no, it's not. And the the problem is when we re when we reach a certain age, we tend to lose what we started with. Mm -hmm. And I urge everybody, don't lose that because you know that will keep you through. I and and one of um uh I forgot his name, but there's a bass player that I know. He's like seventy years old, and he's still like. Like I was just like the consistency was just like man, how is he doing it? Is his name like, Ron about... Carter? No, but that's no. a good one. That's a good okay. one though. Um, yeah. but 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 basically same thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like how are they still maintaining at this time? Because they still put in time with the craft. They still mm. learning learning music till this day. Don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Just keep learning different stuff. Like for me. Um, I only played gospel, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't say that it was my Achilles heel, but it was more like, um, you know, I started learning other music later. And honestly, mm -hmm. it actually developed me to even play my gospel better. 
Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is weird as hell, but it, it yeah. what happened, it, it gave me the discipline. Even when you're playing like funk and you're playing like, um, you know, Motown stuff, you know, there is a discipline on the bass that you got to have. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And if you don't have that, when you, once you get that foundation, you start to approach other things a little differently now. So it's mm -hmm. like, learn everything. You know what I'm saying? You might not, it might not everything, it might not even appeal to you. There's some music that does not appeal to me, but yeah. I still learn it anyway, because at the end of the day, somebody could call me for a country gig and I'll be like, yep, I will do it. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, and, so, you know and, and, and once you go out, you start to experience different things and you start to look at music on a, on a bigger scale, man. And it's, it's amazing. I play, now I play everything. If somebody want to call me be like, Oh, wait, you, you want to play Latin? Oh yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> Just let me know the tunes. I might not know all the Spanish, but you know what? I'll learn the dialect and I'll try to play, you know what I'm saying? And that's where my mindset is always constantly learning. So yeah, yeah. man, that's where it's at. Uh, Real quick, let the people know where to find you, how to find you, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram. Yeah, um, on Instagram, it's uh, N-E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L-3. And that's uh, my Instagram. You know, all you can do be natural. Um, you'll find me there as well. Um, on YouTube, I'm still working that out. I'm still kind of trying to do my rebranding because I have a YouTube channel, but I have not even like, because I've been doing so much other stuff like with the tech, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. even trying to do, all that juggle everything at the same time i'm like you know what you gotta do something and stick to it <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah uh you know so i'm i'm still working out the youtube stuff but once i i, I have the link on my instagram so when, once you go on instagram and you can check the youtube stuff i'm gonna be doing that and i have i've start, I also started creating content that's another reason why i built this too because i wanted to do right. the content because the computer i had and i was trying to convert stuff and then you know once you start dealing with like 4k and all that kind of stuff you, you're waiting for you to render it's like Damn, we gotta leave for hours, but now, <laughs> right. now with this is minutes, like seconds. I'm like, good. <laughs> so Jeez. I have new content that's gonna be coming out. I just been kind of like changing, getting the video and everything done. So I'm just kind of doing a rebranding. So you know, so you'll see some new stuff coming up very soon. Very All right. Soon. Is it a surprise, or are you gonna tell us an idea of what it might be? Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's not a surprise, but it's more like, um, like if you look at one of the videos where I did like a rewind. So I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing like a series where I'm, I'm doing something where I do a video and I do a rewind. So I'll play like the track mm -hmm. and I'll do a rewind. I'll be like, this is how I really thought about it in oh, my head. So, so okay. people can understand yeah. why yeah. I do the things that I do. So you can, you can, because a lot of times musicians play stuff and they're like, oh man, it sounds good. But, but do you understand the theory where behind it? From, and I yeah. want people, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if, like I said, if, when I told you at the beginning, a lot of what I do, it's actually in the track. You just have to listen for it. I just embellished it, you know, just by me playing it. So yeah right. so that's pretty much it all right yeah D that's good man uh folks thank you so much for joining us uh boss it's been a pleasure uh you can expect another episode of the green room on the third week of july we're coming at you once a month third week of, of every month i told you all i was going to try to stay consistent with that that's what we're doing uh it has been a pleasure speaking with you today sir i think there were a lot of gems in this episode um that uh, a lot of people will benefit from a lot of people will appreciate and um yeah man keep blazing Keep, keep nah, thanks that for having up. me, man. I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. You know, you know, my brother, man. You know. Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right. See, All right. see you. Yeah, see you guys later. All right. Bye, everyone. Oh, 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 oh,